gunmen have killed 19 security personnel, including 13 soldiers, 5 policemen, and a vigilante in Kebi State. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, the cases of COVID-19 infections in Nigeria surged on Tuesday with 118 new cases. This is because over 60 evacuees from Ukraine tested positive for the virus. The figures were disclosed by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, who attributed the surge to the arrival of the returnees. Apart from FCT, the Disease Control Center noted that Lagos State, the epicenter of the disease in Nigeria, reported a backlog of 49 cases from March 5th to 7th, 2022, while River State in the South-South recorded a single case on Tuesday. With no fatality recorded, the latest update shows that the death toll still stands at 3,142, while the infection toll has increased to 254,777. At number 9, the United States announced on Tuesday that it is banning all imports of oil and gas from Russia. U.S. President Joe Biden said the move is targeting the main artery of Russia's economy and aims to pressure Russian President Vladimir Putin to put an end to the war in Ukraine. He said we are banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at U.S. ports and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. The American president said although they are taking this step to inflict further pain on Mr. Putin, there will be costs as well here in the United States. Reacting to this on Wednesday, Russia said it was working on a broad response to sanctions that would hurt the West's most sensitive areas. At number eight, the transmission company of Nigeria has said that nationwide blackouts will continue as long as generation companies continues to generate little or no electricity. Specifically, TCN said it wishes to notify consumers of electricity that the current load shedding being experienced nationwide is as a result of very low power generation by the generation companies for TCN to wheel through the transmission grid to distribution companies nationwide. The company stated this in a press release on Tuesday, signed by its general manager, Ndudi Mba. Part of the statement read, the media has been awash with reports that TCN has reduced the load allocation to distribution companies. That information is incorrect. The correct position is that TCN can only transmit the quantum of power generated by GENCOs through the national grid to distribution load centers nationwide. For clarity, TCN does not generate electricity and therefore can only transport cumulative generation from all the generation companies nationwide to distribution load centers. The distribution companies are responsible for end users' consumption. At number seven, operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have arrested one Mike Carr Godwin, a notorious drug dealer at Nukai Market along Jalingo Wukari Road in Jalingo, Taraba State. According to a statement released on Wednesday by the NDLEA spokesman Femi Baba Femi, anti narcotic officers of the agency came under attack during the operation and at least seven of them were injured and one of their vehicles damaged. Despite the attack, the officers, however, managed to arrest their target after recovering some quantities of illicit drugs from the suspect and thereafter retreated to take the wounded to the hospital for treatment. Following intelligence, the operatives on Tuesday, 8th of March, stormed the market at about 2.30 p.m. to arrest the drug dealer and evacuate illicit substances in his warehouse. Soon after the arrest of Micah, Ms. Prince mobilized from the community to attack the officers and vehicles with dangerous weapons. At number six, the ruling All Progressives Congress has formally announced a new zoning formula for various National Working Committee offices of the party ahead of its March 26th National Convention. The formula was released on Wednesday in Abuja. The new formula showed the APC zoned the office of its national chairman to North Central, effectively edging out contestants from other zones. Some of the contestants that would be affected by the formula a former governor of Bonu State, Senator Ali Modu Sharif, and a former governor of Zamfara State, Alhaji Abdulaziz Yari. At number five, gunmen have shot dead an operative of the Ogun State government owned security outfit, the So Safe Corps, ASC Jimmy Ogunjimi. Ogunjimi was reportedly shot dead in the Areke area of Shagamu, where he and his colleagues had visited for a security surveillance. The spokesman for the So Safe Corps, Moruf Yusuf, confirmed the incident on Wednesday. 
Yusuf said Ogunjimi was shot dead in the early hours of Wednesday at Areke, where he and five others were deployed to curb the heinous activities of some gunmen terrorizing the highways in the Remo area of the state. At number four, the Senate has rejected President Muhammadu Buhari's request to amend the Electoral Act 2022. The lawmakers, in a voice vote on Wednesday, unanimously opposed the motion that the bill is read and considered for a second time. The President had passed the Electoral Act Amendments Bill into law in February, but had asked the National Assembly to delete Clause 84, Subsection 12 of the Act. Clause 84, Subsection 12 says, no political appointee at any level shall be a voting delegate or be voted for at the convention or congress of any political party for the purpose of the nomination of candidates for any election. President Buhari said the clause constituted a disenfranchisement of seven political office holders from voting or being voted for at conventions or congresses of any political party for the purpose of the nomination of candidates for any election in cases where it holds earlier than 30 days to the national election. Following this, the People's Democratic Party sued the federal government, the Attorney General of the Federation and the leadership of the National Assembly over fresh moves to tamper with the newly amended Electoral Act. The judge, Justice Iyang Ekwo, ruling on the suit, restrained the president and others from making changes to the past law. At number three, a former Super Eagles player, Justice Christopher, is dead. The former midfielder reportedly slumped in his hotel in Goshe, off Tudun Wada Ring Road, Joss Plateau State, on Wednesday. It was gathered that the deceased had been battling high blood pressure, but was, however, full of life and showed no sign of health challenge when he was seen in the company of his friends on Tuesday. His remains have been deposited at the Plateau Specialist Hospital, while an autopsy is expected to be carried out on his corpse. At number two, the Benin Zonal Command of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons says it rescued 105 victims of human trafficking in various operations in 2021. The Zonal Commander, Naptip Nduka Nwawane, made this known when he spoke with the news agency of Nigeria in Benin on Wednesday. Nwawane said that some of the rescued victims have already been reunited with their families, while some have been empowered with skills to engage in businesses. He said that 134 cases of human trafficking were received by the command in the period under review and that 75 suspected traffickers were arrested while three human traffickers were convicted by law courts during the period, adding that, however, 65 cases were still pending in law courts. Finally, at number one, gunmen have killed 19 security personnel, including 13 soldiers, five policemen and a vigilante in Kebi State. A security source and residents revealed this on Wednesday. They said the incident happened on Tuesday evening in Kanya village, just a day after over 60 persons were killed in the same area. Recall that dozens of vigilantes were killed in nearby Sakaba on Monday in an ambush by heavily armed criminal gangs, known locally as bandits. It was gathered that on Tuesday, hundreds of gunmen invaded Kanya, engaging a combined military and police detachment in a three-hour gunfight. A security source said eight other security personnel, including four soldiers, were hospitalized with wounds. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands, and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.